when a giant rhinoceros beetle encounters a swarm of voracious meat ants. It's a conflict that will end in blood. Rhinoceros beetles are like tanks on the bug battlefield. They're among the biggest of all the beetles, titans of the bug world. Rhinoceros beetles aren't misnamed. They're big, they're kind of clumsy, but they have a thick, heavy, sclerotized exoskeleton that is incredibly hard to pierce. It covers most of their body, and the rhinoceros beetles are awesomely strong. On a power to weight ratio, these battle bugs are the strongest animals on the face of the earth. It's estimated that a rhinoceros beetle is able to push or carry as much as 850 times its body weight. We're talking that a human could lift as much as 65 tons. This is a crazy heavy amount that this rhinoceros beetle is able to carry. For all its brute force, this monster mostly eats rotting fruit, which provides all the fuel it needs to wrestle a rival. The males and the males alone have these big horn-like structures that act like levers. Each male has two forked horns, one on the head, the other on the top of the prothorax. As a weapon, they work like a pair of sharp tongs to catch and dispatch an opponent. But for all his brutish ways, the rhinoceros beetle has one surprising trick up his sleeve. He can fly. The rhinoceros beetle almost transforms itself when it gets ready to fly. It opens its four wings in a click and then lumbers into flight. These are not great flyers. It takes to the air with all the grace you'd expect from a tank with wings. Still, it's a talent that could save its life. And he may need an escape strategy if he strays into meat ant territory. One single ant isn't much of a threat. But where you find one, you'll find many. Individual nests can contain tens of thousands of ants, but they're often linked together into super colonies that can contain hundreds of thousands or more. Meat ants don't sting, but they bite with a vengeance with mandibles honed like steel shears to rip through raw flesh. For the victim, it's death by a thousand cuts. The ants just swarm over whatever they're attacking, and all those tiny little jaws keep snipping and snipping and snipping until it's history. They can make an animal much larger than them run for the hills. Whenever a meat ant is moving, it's hunting. And there are many mouths to feed. Meat ant colonies have multiple queens, all pumping out larvae that need to be fed. This is why the colonies are always on the hunt. They just have so many larvae back at home screaming for energy-rich food. In the eternal tussle for insect supremacy, some bugs are Goliaths, and some more like Davids, with a bad attitude. Meat ants are really kind of ill-behaved ants. These are aggressive ants that are perfectly willing to attack. They're scary ants. Next, an armor-plated warrior goes to battle. Then, a spider supermodel 
on a killing spree. And later, no holds barred for two killer huntsmen. Meat ants are active in daylight, while rhinoceros beetles get busy at night. But there's sometimes a crossover hour. It's early morning, and a tank-like vegetarian blunders into meat ant territory. The alarm goes out through the colony. The ants have sent out the chemical signal to call in further reinforcements. So if the beetle's in trouble now, soon he's going to be in even bigger trouble. As the ants start nipping at his heels, he loses his balance <coughs> and falls onto the nest. The beetle's best defense is its impenetrable armor. the only places where these ants are going to be able to get in and bite at the rhinoceros beetle effectively is at its joints. And that's where the ants attack in force. The beetle tries to escape. He needs to get clear to fly away. But carrying vicious ants as excess baggage, he can't get to the runway. The best thing it could do is fly away, but it gets ready to fly really slowly. The ants dig deeper now. They crawl inside the skin of their prey, spraying formic acid savagely and relentlessly dozens of mandibles are biting the beetle to death at this point the beetle's armor is useless the ants are going to crawl into every crevice they can and bite him into oblivion in this battle size becomes a disadvantage <laughs> A lumbering armored tank is no match for armor-piercing infantry. When bugs go to war, there are no rules, no sense of fair play, and no concept of picking on someone your own size. When a marble scorpion takes on a trap jaw ant, size will matter. But will bigger be better? This ancient rainforest is home to one of the bug world's most durable survivors, the marbled scorpion. Its weapons might be primitive, but they've been tested by time. Scorpions have chased down their prey for more than 300 million years. They're really evolutionary survivors in that they are effective predators that know how to get the job done. The scorpion's tools of the trade are an ostentatious display of murderous intent. Anything but concealed weapons. Scorpions have two main weapons. 
they have their pinchers, where they're able to grab prey, hold it, and tear it apart. In addition, they have the tail with a venomous stinger at the end. So they're able to grab prey, crush it, and sting it. Scorpion venom can kill in an instant. But its eyesight is weak. Instead, the scorpion locates its prey with sensory organs that work like high-tech antennae. They've got something that are known as pectines behind their fourth pair of legs on their belly. They act like radar, so they're very sensitive to chemical information, to vibratory information on the ground below them. The marbled scorpion is also very wily. This cockroach had no idea it was about to become lunch. Grabbed and stung, it's carried away to be ripped apart and devoured. Like spiders, Scorpions prefer their food runny, draining the liquefied flesh of this cockroach. is like sipping a meat martini. When a marbled scorpion goes hunting in the rainforest, most small creatures give it a wide berth. But not all are so easily intimidated. Much smaller in stature and just as determined is the trap jaw ant. And like the scorpion, it comes armed with two fearsome weapons. One at the front, one at the back. The trap jaw sting is very potent. And because they can use it over and over again, they can come in for a first strike, back off, and then just wait for the venom to start to take effect, and then come in for another series of stings to finish the prey off. But the front end is also loaded with a hard-hitting weapon. The trap jaw mandibles open a full 180 degrees, much like a crossbow, and then it's set, all that force waiting. The minute something touches one of the delicate sensory hairs on the inside, snap shut with incredible force. The peak force is equal to 300 times the ant's body weight. And the speed is astonishing. <laughs> 2,300 times faster than the blink of a human eye. The force is so strong, it can actually pop the prey open, sort of like a melon being crushed to expose the soft inside. What a way to go. Trap jaw ants aren't afraid of a battle. Neither is the marbled scorpion. And it won't be long before their combat skills are put to the test. Next, a veteran killer versus an army of ants. Then, one jumps, one spits, one dies. As darkness creeps over the rainforest, the marbled scorpion goes looking for food. Also out scouting for a meal, a trap jaw ant. The ant forages, unaware of the scorpion camouflaged on a rock. Eventually, it sees it. And the ant has only one response, attack. 
The scorpion leads with its left, but can't score a hit. The ant counters with sharp jabs from its jaws, like a stun gun. Each blow sends shock waves through the scorpion's body. It's hurting badly. The lone ant calls for reinforcements. These ants, they're constantly in communication with each other through touch, body movement, the use of chemical signals. The call to arms is fast and effective. Troops arrive in force. This doesn't look good. Scorpion should get out of there as quick as possible. The scorpion is totally outnumbered. Stingers plunge into its body, all over its limbs. Multiple stings send deadly venom coursing throughout the hapless scorpion's body cavity. <laughs> totally paralyzed, those once fearsome claws are useless. The marble scorpion is destined for a marble mausoleum. A scorpion known for its venom is being taken down by an ant that isn't known for its sting, but is absolutely known for its jaws. It's the ultimate indignity. A rainforest supremo is dragged from its rocky pedestal to be cut apart and fed to ant larvae. marches against a swarm of paper wasps. It's a battle worthy of the big screen. Above the ground, a high-rise militia goes through its maneuvers. Its headquarters is a leafy bunker, home not to generals, but to green ant larvae who could one day become soldiers in an ever-expanding army. Green ant colonies are generally spread around a dozen trees that might contain up to 150 nests, with 100,000 to a half a million ants total, all of which will risk life and limb to protect the colony. Every one of these workers comes equipped with weapons of war, serrated mandibles that cut and crush. As in all ant societies, male drones stay at home, leaving this army of sterile females to forage for food. But at the first sign of war, chemicals called pheromones are sent out. Foragers become green grunts and more move into the kill zone. <laughs> Even a huge and highly venomous scorpion is no match for a company of angry green ants. For green ants, defense is all about strength and numbers. They will just keep sending more and more troops out <laughs> until whatever they're battling with is either gone or they kill it and carry it away for dinner. Green ants also deploy chemical weaponry, formic acid that burns organic tissue, sprays from their abdomens. If that weren't bad enough, they swarm over a victim, literally biting it to death. 
A grasshopper many times bigger than one ant is no match for a seething mass of foot soldiers. When the workers are called to arms, you're no longer dealing with a bunch of cute and fascinating little green ants. Rather, they become like this unstoppable organic plasma that can deter any predator, whether it's coming from the ground or the air. Victims become helpless marionettes, dancing to the tune of a swarm of single-minded puppeteers. Below this treetop bunker, with its elite soldiers, another force has moved in. A colony of paper wasps. In a skirmish, they use their aerial maneuverability like a weapon. Paper wasps don't fly fast, but they hover with intent, like attack helicopters, waiting to strike and feed. Paper wasps are really important because they kill so many pest species of caterpillars. The adults are active for anywhere from two weeks to maybe three weeks. They spend all of their time going out and foraging to kill the caterpillars. Like the ants, most of the wasp foraging force are sterile females with heavy artillery at the front and some big guns at the rear. Unlike bees that can only sting once, these wasps can sting repeatedly. But paper wasps don't rely just on firepower. They have tactical coordination down to a fine art. Wasps are actually really smart. They're capable of complex learning. They've got excellent vision. Like green ants, adult paper wasps hunt and kill only to feed their larvae. Their own survival depends on it. Wasps feed the larvae with captured caterpillars. In turn, the larvae produce nutrient-rich saliva that's fed back to the adults. Life goes on in the paper wasp nest and the green ant colony. It's live and let live. But nature is fickle. One unfortunate windstorm can smash one bug civilization up against another without warning. This is two insect civilizations at war. And no matter who wins, both sides are going to suffer massive losses. Next, carnage on a bug battleground. Then, a deadly ninja meets a destroyer in disguise. And later, killer claws versus lethal jaws. In the rainforest, it's the calm before the storm. But as the weather worsens, a tree branch, home to a green ant colony, is flung against a paper wasp nest. War is declared. Wasps mobilize their airborne troops. Gangs of green ants swarm over individual wasps. Green ants have a major tactical advantage here because they can team up very efficiently against an individual wasp, but the wasps can't work together against an individual ant. 
The ants lay pheromone trails and shake their bodies to communicate and coordinate their attack. Without the ant superior teamwork, the wasps are at a disadvantage. But one-on-one, -on -one, a larger wasp overpowers a single ant. Some are thrown to the ground. Others killed instantly. But in ant battle tactics, strength lies in numbers. Individual wasps are pinned down, sprayed with formic acid, and bitten ferociously. Alone, they have no answer to a combined attack. The wasps are so much larger than the ants, and they're not cooperating the same way. They're all actively defending the area, but the ants are able to gang up and pull on different legs. So an individual wasp may have multiple ants attacking it. The green ants may have the upper hand, but now the wasps retaliate. Mounting a concerted airborne attack, they breach the ants' headquarters and begin carrying off the ant brood. More and more wasps overwhelm the ants' nest. It's a mass attack. Under the onslaught, green ants scurry to save their young. It's carnage. The battlefield is littered with the wounded, the dying, and the dead. All either colony can do is pick up the pieces and start over again. The wasps' superior airborne maneuverability and their preemptive strike on the ant's nest tips the balance. They overcome their assailants, but at enormous cost. Defeated, the green ants sound the retreat. Their bunker is torn apart. They scramble to salvage the surviving larvae. In a bug war of this magnitude, the refugees have no choice but to escape with their young, to start a new life in another part of the forest. When a green-bellied huntsman tackles a colony of jumping jack ants, it's a clash of the titans. If an army is only as strong as its weakest soldier, then a squad of jumping jack ants is a force to be reckoned with. Small in size, big on attitude. They're tough and powerful from head to tail. Even though these are small ants, they are really fierce ants. They've got a strong, potent sting that really packs a punch. Barely one third of an inch long, Jumping jack ants fight well above their weight and deliver a mean punch from both ends. At the front, large serrated mandibles that bite, grip, and slash. These mandibles can pack a nasty bite, but this is nothing compared to the sting that they have, the back end, that is capable of injecting a truly nasty venom that can incapacitate or kill prey very quickly. 
with a stinger on the end of its extraordinarily agile tail. The jumping jack can deliver toxic proteins in repeated stings. Powerful enough to induce fatal allergic reactions in humans. The venom is usually reserved for smaller prey, like cockroaches, march flies, and grasshoppers. You would think that these ants are going out and capturing prey for themselves. That isn't so. Actually, these jumping jack ants live on nectar, a little bit of sugar water. Primarily, they're bringing back the prey to feed the developing ant larvae that need meat in order to grow. The larvae are hidden away in nests built with soil. Nests are often constructed under rocks or tree roots. Away from the nest, a jumping jack ant forages alone. Its never-ending job is to bring home the bacon, no matter how cumbersome. It's a pit bull and pack horse rolled into one. These jumping jack ants are really strong ants. They can be grabbing prey, holding onto them with their mandibles, and at the same time, even as the prey is fighting them, they can keep moving them gradually toward their colony. The jumping jack ant has one more astonishing skill. Like a super action hero, it leaps tall branches in a single bound. But it's not the only bug in this forest with superhero status. The green-bellied huntsman is an arch-villain, not afraid to show its true colors. If you look at this spider's belly or the joints of its legs, you'll see that it's a beautiful blue-green color. That's because they have a very different form of blood than humans. And they use this blood to pump up their legs. And if the blood pressure drops, the legs will go limp, just like a hose would when you turn the faucet off. With their hydraulically assisted takeoff, green bellies are super fast. All terrain hunters with the will to kill. This huntsman also keeps a low profile. Camouflaged one minute, prowling the next. A stealthy loner in search of other speedy spiders. This unsuspecting wolf spider is taken down before it knew what hit it. The green belly's vicious fangs rip into its body, mashing it up. The green-bellied huntsman's fangs are large and powerful. So once they've been driven into a prey, there are no second chances. For an accomplished hunter, a large, solitary foe is an easy target. But what happens when the green flash encounters a warring gang of jumping jack ants? It's facing a bunch of pesky little ants. There's not much to bite onto. And even if it kills one or several, there's more coming. Next, showdown. Super ants versus an arch villain. Then, two tough guys slug it out in the rainforest. And later, pro fighters in a no holds barred battle. On the forest floor, a low-slung superhero is about to face a team of brutal base jumpers. Big mandibles, good vision, and they jump. And they're able to jump relatively long distances. The thing is, is even though these are small ants, they are really fierce ants. This is jumping jack territory, an underground nest 
and a patch of forest where they forage for food to feed their larvae. The green-bellied huntsman is hungry too, and it's waiting for a kill. But it's been spotted by a lone jumping jack ant. It launches at the interloper. The green flash grabs it and sinks in its fangs. But the jumping jack gets in a well-timed sting. Toxic proteins, four times more potent than bee venom, target cells and critical organs, partially paralyzing the huntsman. We're still. The alarm has been sounded back at the colony. More ants rush in. The spider manages to crush one in its jaws, but has been stung again. Jumping jack ants are really quite aggressive, and they're not gonna back off just because a single ant has been killed. This is ant behavior. Once they start attacking, they keep going. The ants work as a team, creating a diversion up front. While one stings the disabled spider from the rear. Even more powerful venom floods into the green belly's body. As toxins begin destroying the spider's internal organs. The once pumped up and powerful legs dangle uselessly. Still the jumping jacks attack. Mandibles slash the spider. A blister of green blood swells from a gash in the abdomen. Still attacking with their razor sharp mandibles. The jumping jack ants lap up the green belly's lifeblood. And we thought only vampires drank blood. The ants are lapping up the spider's blood without a second thought. This is a very undignified way to go out. In a bug battle, there's no such thing as an invincible superhero. Make one slip and you're dead meat. Some monster bug wars are a battle of wits and strategy. Other conflicts are won with brute strength and raw power. When an ogre-faced spider and an army ant soldier face off, it's brains versus brawn. In the bug world, take nothing for granted. Shape-shifting assassins can appear anywhere. With long spindly legs and an elongated body, the ogre-faced spider does a perfect twig impression. During the day when the ogre-faced spider isn't actually hunting, they hang in the grass. They have their legs extended, so they look like a twig or grass. They're trying to avoid looking like something that's edible. Camouflage isn't the spider's only weapon. When night falls, the ambush predator starts knitting. The ogre-faced spider has something that's absolutely unique in the animal kingdom. They build a web that they literally throw over their prey. 
This web is almost like a gladiator throwing out a net and capturing its prey. Hanging upside down in midair, tiny claws clinging to silken guy ropes. The ogre-faced spider waits, ready to spread her deadly picnic blanket. The ogre's eyesight can pinpoint almost any target, even in darkness. Two of its eight eyes are like night vision goggles, giving this nocturnal hunter better night vision than even owls or cats. Nearby, an army is on the march. Nomadic, carnivorous, voracious. An army ant colony is a terrifying force. Within this deadly swarm, the most powerful of all are the soldiers. These special ops bugs are bred for war. Army ant swarms are giant, precisely coordinated military machines. And the soldier ants are its attack dogs, except in ant terms, they're about the size of horses. Soldier ants are built for attack. Large heads support the biggest mandibles in the ant world. Curved like fish hooks with razor sharp points, they spear and crush. At the other end, a needle like steam delivers paralyzing venom in repeated stabs. The army ant sting is very potent, but it isn't used all the time. Often just the mandibles are enough for the bullying business. But if an opponent fights back, then the stinger is used like a taser set to kill. Even alone, army ant soldiers are fierce opponents. This giant ground spider seems like an invincible foe. But the army ant soldier has superior one-on-one -on -one tactics. It latches onto the back of the spider's abdomen. The muscles in the soldier's head are so strong, it's almost impossible to get those jaws open once they've clamped down on something. The soldier ant can even be torn in half, and he won't let go. The spider tries to dislodge its opponent, but its fangs can't reach back far enough. The ant stinger's toxic venom paralyzes the spider's muscles and nerves. It's a great meal for the colony. But what happens when the lone warrior confronts the master netcaster? Other predators are understandably hesitant to mess with a army ant soldier. This ogre-faced spider is more than willing to entangle. Next. Vicious mandibles versus a deadly net. And later, the baddest bugs in town slug it out. On the rainforest floor, a lost army ant soldier trying to find its battalion strays into the drop zone of an ogre-faced spider. The spider attacks with its gladiatorial net and toxic venom. The army ant fights with its terrifying mandibles and paralyzing steam. Who will emerge the victor? The soldier ant wanders into dangerous territory. The spider's huge eyes are trained on the approaching target. The net first scoops up the huge mandibles, disabling the ant's primary weapon. But a soldier ant isn't any bug. It's special ops. There'll be no surrender. 
Bumblebee's army hand has strong, sickle-like jaws. It's got a powerful sting. It could do real damage to the ogre face spider. Despite being wrapped up, the army ant can still land a lethal sting. It waits for its opportunity. The spider, too, is choosing its moment. It takes a chance. One bite through the silk sends venom coursing through the ant's body. This soldier's fighting days are over. Its innards are turned to mush and sucked out. All that's left is a shrink-wrapped shell. One more casualty in a never-ending bug war. When a flag-tailed assassin bug goes into battle against a golden carpenter ant, it's precision versus power. In the bug world, there is no shortage of bizarre-looking creatures. With its large body, tiny head, and elephant-like proboscis, the flag-tailed assassin bug takes the prize for goofy looks. Like red flags, colorful tails protrude from the assassin bug's rear end. It could be to warn off a predator, attract a mate, we don't know. But what we do know is that the business side of things is on the other end. That extraordinary proboscis is usually tucked up under the head. But ignore it at your peril. It's rapier sharp. This bug is a methodical murderer. This is a very stealthy hunter. It stalks its prey very softly and smoothly, controlling every movement precisely. Bulging compound eyes register the slightest movement. Thick pipe cleaner legs bristle with sensory hairs. Twin claws are like grappling hooks for climbing. Antennae aren't just sensors. They're part of the arsenal. She would do well to prime her weapons. Nearby, a sworn enemy is on the prowl. Shining like a Christmas decoration, a female golden carpenter ant forages for food. They're called carpenter ants because they dig burrows into decaying trees or soft trees, and they're basically just using their jaws to gnaw their way in. Tough serrated mandibles are not just woodworking tools. They're vicious weapons. Enough for even a solitary ant to take on much larger spiders and scorpions. These guys can be really nasty. They go in, they bite another animal, and then they curl their abdomen around and spray formic acid into the wound. It's corrosive, it causes burns. Formic acid is something that everything wants to stay away from. But what happens when the golden pit bull tries to take down the bizarre assassin. Next, vicious jaws versus a deadly spear. Then, lethal killers let loose. Among the rainforest blossoms, a flag-tailed assassin bug 
is on a stakeout. Close by, a golden carpenter ant is out on the prowl. The flag-tailed assassin bug will use its proboscis to inject toxic saliva and flesh-melting digestive juices. The golden carpenter ant will use its toughened mandibles and burning acid. Who will emerge with their honor and life intact? Unintimidated, the ant moves first. But the assassin is ready. This time, the ant uses its speed advantage. But it's not quick enough. The probing proboscis finds its mark. The assassin bug's venom attacks both the nervous and the muscular system, paralyzing the prey in just three to five seconds after being injected. The proboscis then switches from syringe to drinking straw. The victim's liquefied innards are sucked up by this all-in-one instrument of death. It's been a red-letter day for the flag tail. No mess, no fuss. Everything you'd expect from an experienced assassin. <laughs>